Paul Campanero, real estate coach and trainer, here today to talk with Dan Mum, a real estate agent here in Las Vegas, Nevada with Berkshire Hathaway. Dan's first year in the business, January 2015, was the first month of him being in the business, and he's having an extraordinary year for an agent. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what's been happening with you this past year. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. For joining it. us. Thank yeah. you so much. So uh, tell us now, you've been in the business for, uh, it's January 2015? Yeah, basically since right in the beginning of this year, so about 10 months. Gotcha. And what did you do before real estate? So before this, I worked in a call center. Mm -hmm. So it was an anti-aging company, actually. So much different health and wellness industry, which is obviously a lot different from this. So. Mm -hmm. Were you actually making calls? or? Uh, at first I was, yeah. I moved mm -hmm. up into management, but yeah, I was on the phone for a little bit too. Okay. So uh, did you see any correlation in how any value that brought to the table to the real estate industry? Yeah, or? yeah, there was definitely some carryover, mostly with the customer service and the client service, not so much the sales side of it because we were more inbound calls. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely with how to communicate and how to uh, offer my assistance and service over the phone, there's some carryover there. Gotcha. And so uh, the beginning of your career, tell me a little bit about what that looked like for you. So I did pretty well. I mean, at a young age, I was in a management position, so I was doing pretty well as far as a corporate job. Mm -hmm. But really, I wanted something with more opportunity where I wouldn't really have a ceiling on what I could achieve. So mm -hmm. I didn't really have that opportunity there. What I realized was a lot of my mentors and people that I looked up to, they were all in sales at some point. So I realized this is really where I belonged, really, was in real estate, where I could Mm -hmm. own my own business and really have no limits what I could achieve more opportunities yeah right so I know we hadn't talked about this before but um, t tell me where you're at right now with production and uh, where, where you think you're gonna end up and then what next year goals might look like just so everybody can get an idea of where you're at sure so for 2015 right now I'm at 20 closed deals for the year and that's mm -hmm. in about 10 months so we're in the wow, 10 months now. yeah so great Hopefully by the end of the year, I'm looking to try and get to 30 because I have a lot of stuff going on right now, of course. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 30 by the end of this year would be, that would be a nice goal for wow, me. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is really great. So with that many deals your first year, um, what, what, what things needed to change from when you initially started to when you actually started gaining momentum? What things changed or how did that all unfold? Yeah, there's been a lot of things that have changed in the last few months, which have really increased for me. So Obviously having a great coach and mentor is probably the number one thing. Mm -hmm. That's really, I would say the most crucial part. Uh, also in addition to that, in the beginning, uh, fear of rejection, that's something that is big for a lot of people. Yeah. And I always say in one day of real estate, I had more rejection than three years of my last job. So <laughs> I had to get rid of that real quick and uh -huh. that was obviously a big part of it. How too. did you do that? Like how did you, how were you able to dismiss it and overcome that on a relatively quickly time frame? Uh, just exposure, just becoming desensitized, talking over and over and over on the phone. I think mm -hmm. it just over time it eventually goes away. So now um, you have a, a history of being involved in athletics, mm -hmm. right? Did um, as far as the repetition, did that have any part in being able to jump into that? And by the way, folks, uh, Dan's analytic, right? So it's <laughs> easy to jump into repetition mm -hmm. and uh, cycles. So did that have a part in you? Uh, willingly jumping into that role of of, uh, of repetition yeah I think so uh, just overcoming obstacles in general having an athletic background it's you're presented with a lot of challenges so mm -hmm. yeah I think just being surrounded with people my whole life who would just do whatever it takes and just really that repetitious boredom didn't stop them at all mm -hmm. just helped cultivate that mindset that I needed in real estate too mm -hmm. so gotcha and what would you say were some of the earlier mistakes that you made that maybe you would have changed or done differently when you first started? I would say the major one for me, I think it's really common as far as agents who don't spend enough time doing the right things, right? Following the 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. So I would spend a lot of time answering emails, taking out buyers, driving around, doing things that really just weren't dollar productive. Mm -hmm. So over time I've learned what the most important things I can be doing are, which are prospecting and presenting, pitching listings, and mm -hmm. anything that involves those two tightly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, over time I've learned to really focus my time on that. That's the biggest problem or biggest mistake I think I made in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's just not spending enough time or delegating or appropriating that time. Yeah, I knew it was important, but I wasn't intentional about delegating or you know really blocking out distractions from mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So um, how do you deal with the ups and downs of being a real estate agent? I mean, it's it's. I'm sure the first years. Yeah, been it's tough. had some ups and downs. Absolutely, and I, I think it'll always be that way to some extent, but 
Um, especially in the beginning, I have an amazing girlfriend who's really tremendous. She supports me and she helped bridge the gap in the beginning financially, which was huge. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people don't have that. So mm -hmm. I was really fortunate to be in those circumstances, yeah. but um, even past that, she's helped provide emotional support, which is tough, you know, when times get hard and mm -hmm. you don't have a lot going on, it can be yeah. really difficult. So. That's, that is important to have somebody supporting you. I mean, supporting you in regards to uh, where your mindset's at and mm -hmm. to get through some of those ups, ups and downs emotionally. Yeah, absolutely. Even, yeah. So that was one thing. And then the other thing, I listen to a ton of instructional audio. If I'm at dinner or lunch or driving, I'm always listening to something. Mm -hmm. And that helps me just, you know, kind of keep moving, stay positive, progressive, and just keep on trying. Right. Any uh, suggestions on some of the things that um, outside of uh, real estate training specifically that helped with mindset to 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 go through some of that? Yeah. I, some of my role models and mentors, Darren Hardy, Jim Rohn, mm -hmm. uh, Tony Robbins, really the major ones that a lot of people yeah. probably subscribe to. All great stuff. Um, yeah, those are all people that mm -hmm. have really shaped the uh, philosophy that I have. So mm -hmm. Now, uh, the next question was how, how um, mindset, uh, what your mindset was when you first started prospecting, and you kind of touched on that a little bit. But um, is there anything that you do specifically now that you've gained some momentum with where your mindset is with income generating activities, specifically prospecting, to uh, maintain it or to to go to a further level? I know we talked about uh, material, mm -hmm. but is there any exercises or things that you do to help reinforce that? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that's changed regarding my prospecting and my philosophy about it since I started was just the understanding of how important role play is and being really intentional about improving my skill level there. Because if you listen to a tape of me prospecting when I first started versus now, it doesn't even sound like the same person. Mm -hmm. It's just completely different. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say the biggest thing is now I understand like a professional sports player to use that analogy again, mm -hmm. even when they're at the professional level, they still practice all the time. They have mm -hmm. team practice all the time and I right. need to have that same mindset where I'm constantly practicing and improving. Mm -hmm. so. And so constantly practicing improving is something Dan works really seriously on. Tell him you, you record your, your, uh, your calls. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I record all my calls. And tell him a little bit about how, what you do with recording your calls. So, well, one thing I go back and I listen for my own feedback just to see where I can improve or mm -hmm. if there was a call that I listened to, I was like, man, I really should have had a better outcome there. I can go back and listen. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it can be really useful for if I have a conversation and I have an appointment a few days later, mm -hmm. I can go back and really listen to the finer details of the conversation so that when I talk to that person again, I'm mm -hmm. a little bit more in tune with where they are. Yeah. That is great. That's great. I haven't even heard that before of people using it for that aspect, mm -hmm. but that's brilliant for uh, being thorough. Sometimes we're typing notes and uh, you know we miss something or we forget to put it into the notes mm -hmm. and uh, that's awesome. So it, recording yourself can be pretty humbling for anybody. I know even I was in the same boat. Yeah. I listened to role play because I recorded a lot of my role play to improve and I thought I was doing pretty good and the other day I stumbled into some old recordings and I listened <laughs> and I said wow I really yeah. wasn't that good um, but being yeah. open to that and humbling yourself to the process that's mm -hmm. um, that really had to give strides in in your and you saw you saw how you were getting better faster yeah right? absolutely it yeah. really just accelerates the whole process yeah um, as far as your prospecting goals now where do you want to be so right now my goal is to set basically an appointment every day I prospect, which is around six days a week. So six appointments a week to set, and then hopefully to go on three of those and get two listings signed a week. Mm -hmm. Right. And Dan's a young guy, so uh, he's not married, although he has a significant other and uh, no kids, and that's great. You know, mm -hmm. someone who has kids has some limitations, and mm -hmm. especially at the beginning of your career, I, I think it's really important. And uh, and I've watched you grow into the things that need to be done, like maybe uh, alternative prospecting hours, mm -hmm. either evenings or uh, weekends if possible. Uh, and if you have that freedom, that's that's a really uh, a big thing to do because. Uh, top producers who are uh, have a busy life and kids, we may not be so uh, subject to diving into that. So that's yeah. definitely an advantage. Yeah, you just got to find whatever, especially when you're new, you just got to find whatever edge you can get. And yeah. that's one of them for me, luckily, just due to my circumstances. Have you seen uh, good results with that in, the, in either the contact ratios or... Uh, reception and how people receive you or what's yeah both mm -hmm. uh, so when I'm prospecting on weekends for example just they're not being called as often so mm -hmm. I'm the first person to call them and they're just much more receptive mm -hmm. and then just more of them are likely to answer the phone because they haven't seen eight nine ten calls come in already right so. right 
so what, what seems to be your biggest obstacle to meeting your daily goals? As far as on a daily basis, I would say just spending enough time prospecting because it's real easy to get caught up in the minutia of real estate in general. Mm -hmm. And that's even once you've been doing it a while, you just, if you give distractions an inch, they take a mile and you really have to like spend energy to just not do anything except for prospect during yeah. those hours. It's so. so easy to get sucked into uh, creative avoidance mm -hmm. things that are happening around us. And uh, you, uh, you know, maybe part of it being the analytic where you're, you've so, uh, so thoroughly prioritized the fact that the importance of prospecting, mm -hmm. you've kind of become fixed on that and uh, being able to shed off some of these things quicker mm -hmm. to do what needs to be done, which is at this point when you're new, income generating activities is everything. All the classes and the CE extra credits and uh, the administration and the technology, you're right. Like it's, you can so easily get sucked into that. We were yep. talking about that yeah, we were today. <laughs> What are the, some of the things? What are some of the things that you do to keep your energy and uh, and your enthusiasm strong? Yeah, it's really tough sometimes, but um, physical exercise obviously is great. Sometimes if I'm just, you know, not really feeling it or low on energy, I'll run up and down the stairs or just do some push-ups even up in the office sometimes mm -hmm. when no one's watching. Just you know, get some energy back. Just moving my body, I think, helps in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I still always struggle with it to be honest. Just later in the day, sometimes it can be tough. Um, mm -hmm. Enthusiasm is tough to maintain at a high level, especially for me. I find in presentations, I can kind of, you know, just get flat. Go analytic a bit. on them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Just that tendency, just to you know, not have a lot of excitement. So yeah. just a conscious effort. I'm always thinking about being intentional with my inflection and making sure I sound interested in them. Right. Yeah. And you know, for those of us who aren't expressives it's it's harder work mm -hmm. you know to express ourselves and uh, to be intentional about expressing an emotion we may not be feeling to empathize or uh, get on the same on the same channel for, on the same frequency with the energy of the other person on the other end of the, the line and um, so the fact that you've had to basically up your versatility mm -hmm. right exactly. so that you yeah. can uh, have better conversations mm -hmm. and then that's what's been elevating the quality of your conversation. Yeah, that's one other thing I think that's changed about me personally since I've gotten into real estate. I've just become much more versatile with handling lots of different types of people and that's because I'm able mm. to, you know, increase my energy and enthusiasm right. for those types of people who yeah. enjoy that. Which wasn't your personality type. Not naturally. I mean, at all. we're kind of the same on that, right? Like we're mm. the guys who at like a, an event or we you know it's a little bit harder for us to reach out the hand and yep. make eye contact. Yeah, I would never introduce myself <laughs> at a party. I would just, <laughs> yeah, I right. was never that person. But this is real estate. So mm -hmm. if we want to make money, we got to talk to people. Yep. Great. That's awesome. Uh, as far as what your biggest improvements you've made the last couple months as a more recent, mm -hmm. as far as adjustments in your business, whether it be prospecting or schedule or skills, what's been happening recently? Yeah, just to tack on to what we said before about role play, just being really intentional about setting enough time for it and really having the right uh, mindset about it was really important for me. So role play would be number one. And also my presentation skills have just, if you watch one of my first presentations, they were a train wreck. They just weren't organized, didn't really have a plan. Now it's really, I've practiced it. By the time I go into a presentation, I've already done it once or practiced it once at least in my head or maybe mm -hmm. with a partner. So mm -hmm. I would say those two are the main thing. Good, good. And uh, how do you think coaching and training's helped you over the last few months? Because you weren't, uh, maybe some indirect coaching initially or mm -hmm. tell me where you were when you first started and then where, where you've come along and then where you are now on that. Yeah, so when I first started, I did have some coaching, but it wasn't structured. It was just kind of drop a little knowledge here or there. Impromptu. Just, exactly, mm -hmm. impromptu. Mm -hmm. um, since we've worked together, it's really been structured every single week. And really, it's helped me. It's everything about my business. I would say 90% of what I know about sales is what I've learned from my coach. So mm -hmm. obviously, my sales skills. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my sales skill obviously has improved greatly because of coaching. Um, but also, I think even more importantly is accountability for me, knowing that I have someone that's looking at my numbers and who's mm -hmm. going to be watching. And if I don't perform, they're going to be keeping an eye over it. I yeah. think for anyone, that's a huge part of it. Yeah. What would you share with new agents uh, struggling or getting into the business? 
uh, one or two things, just key points to really give them a value? I think just sticking to the basics. I know I've talked about it a lot, but yeah, just finding what the most important things you can do are and just sticking to the basics and master the basics. So mm -hmm. prospecting and really present, uh, presenting are really the two most important things. So mm -hmm. making sure you're spending enough time to where you're good at those and you have good fundamentals in place mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. Well, you can't get any business unless you, 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 you're prospecting or you're involved in some kind of income generating activity. So mm -hmm. That on a, you know, Tony Robbins talks a little bit about that on, on a mat, you know, you have to take massive action. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we're, you know, that's one of the reasons why you're watching this is if you're not focusing on your skills, then uh, you're doing a whole lot of things wrong versus practicing, uh, instilling in yourself the knowledge, the skills to have better conversations so that you can have results faster. And that's exactly what you've done. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you've done an awesome job. Man. Thanks. I'm I appreciate so it. So proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's all due to you for the most part. I would no, say in the last um, few months here, it's really been. I'm just pointing. I just point where the water is and 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 where to drink it. And you've taken the responsibility to uh, get involved with those things. So you, you're doing a great job. I can't wait to see what 2016. Yeah, goals. I'm really excited. It's gonna be awesome. And I appreciate your time for tuning in. 